Um, I think it was not at all what I expected. I think most people say that. I think uh, nobody expects a hospice to be so bright, so colourful, uh, full of people laughing, making noise, having fun. Maybe I thought at some point it may have been like a hospital environment, but it is nothing like that at all. Nothing. It was like a five-star hotel. And it was peaceful and uh, just a great place to be, a very happy place. It's just such a lovely, warm place. Everybody was friendly, everybody was, you know, only too happy to help. When I go home every week, my wife says, I'm so happy when I walk in the door. You know, Rich is amazing. And it's an environment that you can't really describe to anybody. You, you need to come here. What I hadn't bargained for is what a joyful experience it is to be here. Because you maybe wouldn't expect that, but it is. Caring volunteers play a very important part at Helen and Douglas House. They enhance the social opportunities available to the patients and children and offer a means of normalisation. Many of the young adults and children with life-shortening conditions are socially isolated and have little opportunity to integrate within their own communities. Volunteers offer a means by which we can bring the local community to our patients. They bring a diverse range of skills, music, art and general life experiences. Sometimes volunteers can make a wish come true for the patients, such as bringing a squirrel monkey in to hold. But the most important thing a volunteer can bring is the ability to see past the severe condition to the person inside. It's amazing how many people have so many talents that add value to what goes on in the house. We have people from 18 to 78 um, who come in, people who can play music, people who can read books, who do cooking, um, and other people who just bring themselves. And sometimes just bringing a personality um, into the house and talking about what goes on in the outside world is as valuable as somebody who can play a musical instrument. I work on the care team. Um and my main role is to coordinate the volunteers who work um, on the care team. Um, we have volunteers that come in every week and we have other volunteers who um, come in occasionally. Uh, volunteers uh, include uh, hairdressers, massage therapists, um, bands, magicians, uh, numerous, too numerous to mention. The volunteers that work with me on the care team. Once they've done their um, training with Wendy, um, I take them on and go through some extra training and work with them for two shifts to show them how to do things as exciting as making tea and coffee, which is really important, um, cleaning, doing the laundry. Um, I teach them about infection control and they work alongside the care team. Um, they never replace a care team member that they work by the side of the care team member to enhance the care that we can give to our guests that stay with us. Erthin from Corner plucks magician the with begin. To begin with, the magician plucks a coin from thin air. Nothing in this hand, one coin, nothing in this hand. Can't say fairer than that, can we? I wanted to do something that's going to be a useful, valuable. So one of the things I thought I could offer, which is particular to me, was playing the piano. You know, I, it's lovely to be able to play for the guests and the carers, um, because I feel sometimes, you know, people want a bit of light relief in the middle of the day, the carers particularly, and the guests as well, you know, I think different guests respond in different ways, but I'm sure that, at least I hope, they will benefit from it. Somebody suggested maybe come in here to do some volunteering, and I thought, oh, Douglas House, what could I do there? And I thought, how can I use my art skills? And they said, well, let's go down there and see what they do. 
In the art room, we have everything there. We can do some deco patching, we can do collage, we can do drawing, painting, oil painting, make things, jewellery making. There's loads of stuff that goes on in there. And when I go in every day, it's completely different. You can see, you know, the way you've got like the whole position of it, you can see. Well, I'd already done some charity work, um, looking after a, a young chap who'd been in care all his life. And when that finished, I was looking for something else to do. And I had some connections uh, with Helen Douglas House from, from the past, and so it was a, an obvious choice for me to uh, come and help here. It just really seemed to be the kind of volunteering that I wanted to do. They often have youngsters who like to get out, and that varies from taking them to the pictures, uh, I went to Madame Tussauds a couple of weeks ago or just to the local garden centre to look around and have a cup of tea. Um, just they love going out in the van for a couple of hours. I wanted to go on and study medicine and become a doctor and I wanted to do some kind of volunteering um, to help me make that decision. Um, so I wanted some experience in a healthcare setting but I also felt that I was spending a lot of time just studying and, and doing doing my degree and I wanted to, to do something that would help other people somewhere else. We have a professional jazz musician that comes in once a month and the young adults come and listen to him play. He is in his mid-twenties so shares the same age as many of the young people that come. A funny story I do remember is I came in one afternoon and I saw one of the guests who's in a wheelchair having a race with a broom down the corridor with, some, <laughs> with somebody else and they were in hysterics and there was lots of noise going on and there was music playing really loud. It was like I just walked into like Formula One or something like that and that was hilarious. I was coming in on days and I've seen some care team members wearing big wigs which is just another day in Douglas House. My most memorable trip, and that was before Christmas, I was asked to take three youngsters from Helen House to Clarence House. And it was a special day where Camilla had invited two charities, us and the London taxi drivers. And it was to allow the youngsters to go there, meet Camilla, help Camilla and the major of the, the uh, horse guards decorate the Christmas tree and then have lunch. I think one of my most, my strongest memories of working here is being in the jacuzzi with a, a young man who clearly was feeling confined in his chair and we all get in the jacuzzi together in our swimming costumes and it's really fun and he was, we were really mucking about and teasing each other and his face absolutely lit up and um, yeah, I mean that, that happens here but that was a particularly memorable experience. There was one evening when um, I took with some staff um, a brother and a sister who are guests but um, they come to Douglas House because they can spend time together here. Unfortunately because of their disabilities they're not able to live together um, at home. Uh, and we went to the pub which is something that I just take for granted um, as part of at the time I was a student. It was a normal part of student life but for this young man it was a really special thing to do. I think probably on my second visit I was working with a guest here, a young man in his twenties. Um, it was quite difficult to communicate verbally and he had a pad that you um, point to letters and things like that to explain. Them. So I was, I was with him for a couple of hours and it was quite difficult to communicate but it was very very rewarding and at the end he held out his arms and said I'll miss you and that was so you know that was just about everything you needed. The training runs for um, four separate evenings or a full day and we're now in the process of extending the training so that we can help volunteers more quickly know what to expect when they come in-house. 
They primarily work um, alongside the care team, helping with cleaning and um, sometimes it's just a matter of watching a DVD and those are the sorts of things that we can talk through on our training. When you start here in your training you get told a lot about you know what can happen, what will happen to a lot of the guests, people that you've worked with, people that you come across with. Um, come across and you get a lot of support from not just from the care team but from volunteers as well and from other members of staff. It's a really close-knit family and everybody comes together when you know if something happens and they, the door is always open for you able to talk, call someone and they do speak to you a lot, everything's talked about. Training is really important. I think as we've already said um, Trying to explain what the experience is going to be is very difficult, so during training we try and help the volunteers come to an understanding of what being in Douglas House is about. My advice to anybody that is thinking of volunteering with Helen Douglas House would be that it's an extremely rewarding experience and you will get loads of support and you'll really enjoy it. Initially think about if you've got enough time because it is quite a big commitment and it's important, I know as a member of staff, if we have a volunteer who comes for a long time, it's so much more worthwhile for us and thinking about it from the perspective of the volunteer, you get so much more out of it if you're able to commit to coming regularly for a long time because the more you get to know the guests, the more you get to know the staff and, and what we do here, the more, the more useful you can be but also the more you'll get out of it. Um, and then the second thing I'd say is stick with it because it does, ta it does take a little while and it wasn't until I'd been here maybe three, three four months coming every week that I felt that I could be really useful. Um, but the, the longer I stayed, the better it got. Hello. Good evening and welcome to um, Helen and Douglas House News with me, Josh. And me, Jack. This evening we are joined by Afro, Jim and Hi. Steve. Um, first, Afro, uh, uh, Jack, we would, we would like to ask you how long you've been coming to Helen and Douglas House? For five years. So, um, do you remember your first day here then? Obviously not. Um, no. 